allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Again, thank you for suffering through our budget training and getting things set up. Oh, it was very enjoyable. Did you say suffer? Suffering. Through. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hopefully, it's a joke. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for being here tonight. So let's go ahead and get going. Uh, first up, student success report, which I understand is a um, update from our English learners program. Uh, Mrs. Ettinger. Ettinger. Excuse me. My neighbor's Ettinger. So I. Thank you for making me first. Yeah, you're up yes. first. So come on up. Yeah. Okay. I think just kind of make sure you're, you're near the mic. Right here is okay. Whoa. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Daryl Etner, the ELD teacher and Title III coordinator. And Nancy has my PowerPoint coming, I'm hoping. Yep, we're pulling it up. We've got hard copies here of the boards. Thank you. Uh, so, what I do is uh, address the needs of all of the English learners in our school district, K through 12. And initially, an English learner is identified by the home language survey. When a student registers, the parent states whether or not this child uh, hears another language at home as they're being raised and or speaks another language at home. Uh, so yes, uh, thank you. So if they do say yes on the home language survey, then I give the student an ELPA screener. ELPA is English Language Proficiency Assessments. And this is a state uh, computer-based test which shows their proficiency in listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Uh, this year, 11 students were screened in grades kindergarten, first, third, ninth, 10th, and 11th. Three tested proficient, which means they do not receive EL services, and eight entered our program. The home languages of our current ELs are Spanish, Mandarin, Pashto, Tagalog, Gujarati, and Navajo. Okay, next, please. So at the end of each year, or at this time period in the year, we test the summative ELPA, which shows their progress throughout the year. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing, again, computer-based, scored by the state. Uh, and this year was the first year for an alternative ELPA for uh, students with special needs. One of our students qualified, and we will get his score result in May. In order, oh, I'm sorry. Different. Is that not computer based then? Is that what's different? It is computer based with the aid of a human. So I actually can read aloud his questions and then he tells me the answer and I help him to enter it on the computer. So um, it's a new design and they're hoping that it works and me too, because it was very valuable for the student. And it's um, an alternative, especially for special needs. Students. Yes, yes. Um, so these students, all of them, must receive at least a four out of five on all of the domain, domains to be exited from the program. So that means that they no longer receive English learner um, classes. However, I do monitor them. If they're exited from the program, we monitor for four years after they have graduated. Uh, the the response Responses from the state come in periods of about a month after the students have finished. So the students who finished back in February, I received their results in April, and five of those students showed proficiency improvement in all the domains, although no one was high enough to be exited. All of those students will remain in our program next year. Uh, I tested a total of 42. Um, the next results will come out both May 12th and June 2nd. Okay, here is our new excitement. We have a parent liaison. Welcome, bienvenidos to Stephanie Zavala Luna. Um, she yes. is our Spanish bilingual alumna of Brookings Harbor School District. She communicates with all of our parents uh, of English learners. If they don't speak Spanish, it's fine because she always speaks in English to all the other parents. Most all of our parents do speak English. 
uh, if they are not Spanish speakers. The Spanish speakers is where we need the most help and thank you for that, Stephanie. Uh, she organizes and leads the monthly parent meetings and our attendance is booming. Uh, she translates Spanish language documents for the district, responds to attendance calls and questions from the parents. And um, there's one more thing that I can't read. That Neither is can not. <laughs> it, okay, so it's generally helping uh, communicate between the parents and the students, helping the parents to understand how to help their students at home as well as here in school. Our monthly parent meetings are hosted here at the K-School cafeteria. Thank you, Carol and Nick. And we have 31 in attendance this past Monday. Uh, we have community and health resources that we share, local educational opportunities at SWAC. Uh, we provide information for helping their students at home and communication uh, for attendance, et cetera. Uh, we have guest speakers. Uh, we collaborate with the South Coast Educational School District and the parent cafes that they provide. Uh, food is provided thanks to the SCESD. And we have activities for children and also gifts and uh, Fred Meyer gift cards are provided to those parents who come provided the following month. And also the students get games and books. So that's been a very good success. Here's something else exciting, our after-school language club. Last year, uh, the fifth graders in, in, in my ELD class were interested in speaking their home languages for fun after school. And so they've continued it. They wanted to continue it this year. Um, every Wednesday when school ends, they come for just about uh, 45 minutes. And we have elementary, middle and high school students who come over to help us too. And they uh, learn Spanish and Mandarin. Uh, so if you could play the next slide. Is it Spanish or Mandarin? And. Or and, Mandarin? and whatever they want for oh, fun. So they learn one language. They can learn both if they want. It's just for fun. No, no, okay. Audio off my computer tonight. Sorry. So that's our sixth grade uh, student who was a fifth grader last year here. She comes over on her own from the middle school every Wednesday and helps these students understand how to read and speak Mandarin. That's amazing. And we also have several students who speak Spanish and I speak Spanish and Stephanie helps out. And also Saron Cruz comes over after her uh, high school time and helps out. It's lovely. All right, got a little hung up on that one. That's all right. Thank you. Our next slide, I think, will be about Saron Cruz's activity. Yes, okay. So Spanish story time with high school senior Saron Cruz. Um, she is doing an independent study with me to read to all elementary students in Spanish. This is her idea. She works also at the Checo Community Public Library and collaborating with Laureen Foreman, the librarian there, they wrote a grant to purchase children's Spanish language books for our school district. And so she brings those books over here. She reads to the students at, in K school here in the regular classrooms uh, and gives the books to the Spanish speaking students at our parent meeting. All of this was uh, the point of encouraging students to speak their home language and uh, enjoy reading and keep their, the parents involved with the student's education. And there she is in Mrs. Dietrich's room the other day. And then we have a little video also of her. Sorry about the sound. I don't think the sound's going to come through tonight.
Yeah, it, that's okay if we can't hear the sound. Um, she, the kids were actually repeating the words in Spanish after she was saying them, which was really quite nice. Okay, the, another exciting thing, seal of biliteracy. The Oregon State Seal of Biliteracy is something that has been happening in Oregon since 2016. And this year I was thrilled to have students interested in doing this. It's the official state verification of a student's ability to speak, read and write in their home language or any additional language they happen to speak other than English. They must pass a stringent computer-based test in listening, speaking, reading and writing. It's an achievement and an honor recognized at graduation by a seal on their diploma and noted on their transcript. It provides a gateway to higher education and employment as a true biliterate individual. Two seniors have passed the Spanish test, Sara and Cruz and Brian. Congratulations, Brian. All right. Three others will be completing the test in the next few weeks in two in Spanish and one in Korean. This is what the seal will look like, hopefully, on your diploma. I'm not exactly sure. And we're hoping that we get these medals, but I can't guarantee it at this point. Okay, congratulations, Brian, thank you. All right, now, this is the final part that's very important to me um, and to all of us here. We are proposing a new ELD curriculum to uh, be the main curriculum, which we still have a supplemental curriculum from the past. Uh, this curriculum by National Geographic that we all know and love, um, Cengage Learning is the publisher. It has been adopted by ODE. It is research-based and it aligns to our standards for the years 2022 through 2029. The quality of the content and language complexity has been evaluated by ODE to be satisfactory and exceeds expectations for student engagement. There are multiple levels of K through 12. It is cohesive. So all students from grades kindergarten through 12 will be following the same program, uh, obviously at different levels. There are cross-curricular current topics with project-based project based learning, high quality print readers. And I brought some for you to look at later. Beautiful photography, quality of the books. Um, and there are student consumables. There is digital access that comes with videos and interactive online activities and assessments. It will be used for the years 23, 24 this coming year. And it is good for the next seven years. I checked. Mm -hmm. And so it, we also have the access, the digital access is good for seven years once we purchase it. So we'll bring that forward on the next so month's agenda for adoption. Yes. Okay, and this is the name of, these are the names of the books. They have a wide range of uh, titles. These are the ones that we've chosen that we feel best cover the uh, students that we have. Okay, Thank that's you. the end. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll put the books on display for you to look at. Excellent, thank you. Great presentation. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. I'm amazed by the, the range of languages, really. It's really oh, and did you have questions? I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll just yell them out at you. Uh, anything else? No, no, thank you. I appreciate that. It was very informative. Okay, I think we have to have Brian do this in Spanish. Maybe. I was just going to say, can you do it in Spanish? <laughs> that should be mandatory now. I could do the whole thing in Spanish if you want. Uh, well, Mr. Walker, I think you are up for a student report. Okay, let's start. Okay, so first off, we have the freshmen. So they have already started prepping for homecoming next year, since this is their homecoming and their last dance also got canceled. But uh, I will explain why that happened, but they are planning their homecoming in advance just to make sure that they actually have people come and that that doesn't cancel and that they just have uh, know what they're going to do since they haven't thrown a party yet or a dance. And the sophomores, they're not, they're not really doing anything right now apart from helping with track meets or helping other grades set up for stuff, such as the juniors. They're prepping for prom on May 13th from 8 to 11 at SWAC, and they're, of course, going to need help decorating such big space so the sophomore is going to help them including the freshmen too because they can help too since it's just planning that they're doing and then the seniors we're prepping for graduation and we're just kind of getting stuff going so we're deciding who our guest speaker is we have settled on kevin bain you guys does that sound familiar 
Absolutely. He's the radio guy. He does like all the sports announcements on radio. Well, he's he's he reached out to us because he expressed uh, he expressed he really wanted to do it. So we just decided to give it to him, and we couldn't find anyone else. <laughs> so, anyways, we're also starting the cap decorations. Our teachers are putting together some supplies for us just to decorate our hats, like traditionally all seniors do. And then we're also working with the juniors right now to bring back the senior junior banquet. I don't know if you guys heard of that before, but that hasn't happened in years because of COVID and just, it's just kind of fallen off the plate because everyone's busy with graduation, but we kind of, we're trying to work on bringing back tradition because we're seeing that this tradition is kind of failing right now or not even tradition. In fact, it's just school spirit and the drive to want to do stuff with your fellow peers. So we're working with that to bring that on May 17th. There is talk about a scavenger hunt that teachers will organize for us. And we're gonna, at this banquet, we're gonna have food, just talk with each other, say goodbye to our junior friends. And they're gonna present the, uh, the senior most, like most likely to become president, most likely to, I don't know, be famous, most mm -hmm. likely. They make up all kinds of categories. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, all that, you know? And then uh, the blood drive is happening next Thursday. It's our traditional blood drive. And if, I don't know if you guys heard, but we do have the best like blood drives for high schools in Oregon. So okay. we're all encouraged to. <laughs> yeah, we encourage you to come and give blood. <laughs> Anyways. Next Thursday? Yes, all day. Uh, then we have the senior assembly on June 2nd. And that's this is usually the traditional uh, farewell to everyone. Just kind of have some fun games with the seniors. If they show up. I hope they do. Because they like skipping stuff. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so we're going to throw that on June 2nd. And then I just had some pointers to point out. Um, so I just wanted to like update you guys on the music stuff. So orchestra is going to Newport. And this is a this is a giant festival that we started going to last year. I don't know if they'll invite us back because they usually rotate. But Corey has gotten us into crazy amounts of just for every music department. Like he talked about the OSAA concert and all that and how we had clinicians. And that was just really cool. And now we're going on this one where we're also going to be clinician by famous composers and just conductors from across the United States, mainly two. And they will talk us through expertise, skills, and just the musicality of music. Uh, and then I just wanted to touch upon the subject of just student behavior. So these couple of, I don't know, this year has been a little different. I'm not going to touch on specific subjects, but student behavior has always been kind of sketchy after COVID. I'm, I'm, I talked about this before about how I believe like COVID messed with the social rules that kids usually experience and they're not used to, I don't know, sort of order and following rules and they think everything is kind of a game and I just wanted to let you know that it's getting better but there have was an incident like I believe earlier this week or last week where it was just kind of concerning of how those students are acting and I just think we should uh, try and stimulate kids in the younger grades to understand hey don't do this this is not going to lead you down the correct path you're only going to sabotage yourself you're closing off doors yourself and really uh school is not all that bad and you just gotta we just gotta find a way how to encourage kids again to like school but to still learn and not to make it all fun and games of course because school is not all that but in a way to bring these kids back from their this kind of destructive behavior respect yeah, so we just, I don't know, I don't have a plan for that, but <laughs> I'll try. It. It's a need. <laughs> and I just, yeah, that's it. And I just wanted to thank Miss Edner for just creating such a great program for us bilater like bilingual people. And it's just really nice. That's it. <laughs> thank you, Brian, appreciate that. That took, uh, well, first of all, um, to address those, Kind of heavier topics mm -hmm. you know a lot of times uh, we get the uh, you know the hey this is what the football team did and hey this is what da -da 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 did but to actually address some some critical needs uh, I've, it takes a lot of courage um, so but i have a question for you um in terms of uh leadership right you're in leadership yes what um what do you guys what do you in how do you develop your leadership skills? 
this is the part also oh, I forgot to mention this we're kind of leadership seems to be shifting over to a class of just planning this is that's just kind of I've been seeing the shift a little bit it's kind of always been about planning but we don't really do anything to really engage with the students so I kind of want to do something she has us on a curriculum right now to just help us learn to be uh, self-aware as leaders as to be like uh, if you, there's, there's this one question that really hit me. She's like, if you were a hostess, how, how, would, how would you determine who's a good host? And then it would talk about the qualities of, such as being caring, empathetic, uh, being the leader, being in charge, but with courtesy and stuff like that. And, but we as leadership, all we try to do in leadership to develop our, I guess our leadership aspect within school is to be academically successful, be kind to others, and try to promote the social engagement of kids right now. That's what we're mainly focusing on. Because I, I was actually, you know, I had this thought this, this month, I was thinking about your leadership class, and I was thinking about leadership in general. And, um, you know, I, I guess where I'm getting at, I was thinking about like, um, you know, when, it, when, it, when a kid is appointed uh, band leader or uh, team captain, it would almost be worth maybe um, a conversation to see if being in that leadership role would require becoming part of leadership um, and working on that skill set so that you can find the best version of yourself more effectively as opposed to just identifying your skill set. You know, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, to then enhance the leadership experience the class um the, so, you know i don't know if that would ever happen um, but it just it crossed my mind and so i was curious i wanted to have that conversation with you about you know, how the leadership is operating including more people and stuff like that right well i mean you know right when you're the band leader you're expected to take a role in the leadership role and you're expected to follow through and i know something that Corey does quite a bit is he appoints you know different section leaders and different, mm -hmm. different and they're not departments. seeing it as the same anymore he told he tells me that and like many other students like when i assign a kid uh let's see colton and rebecca are both drum corps leaders so the yeah, other were goofy and before that but once they got into those positions then they became yeah they're still goofy but and fun to hang around with but they're more serious and like encouraging their peers to take to, that responsibility seriously. To take that. To take that. Uh, but yeah. the leadership class mm -hmm. main leader could help, leadership could help yeah. them develop those skills. But yeah, exactly. That's the same with your is. athletic leaders, you know, yeah. your team captains and whatnot. Um, as a sense of responsibility, the part of being in that role that you have to actually develop that skill. Exactly. And it would yeah. increase your leadership participation too, participation too. well I, I think it would broaden it right yeah yeah it would have broadened it. yeah we would have more more areas or scopes of mm -hmm. right. school yeah more influence. it's all leadership you know it is the skills are the same no matter what you're doing i mean uh, different nuances but yeah same thing though <laughs> I, I applaud your your efforts and your maturity your reports have been spot on yes thank you <laughs> I try, try to be the leader. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to start a kindergarten and have a bullying. Let's just start every year, do every grade and have a bullying. But see, that's the thing. I don't think it's bullying. I think but, it's strictly, it's strictly these kids don't want to just cooperate. They just, I don't know what it is. It's, it may be still part bullying. Yeah, they don't value, they're not valuing something and they're just putting it off to the side. And I just don't know what it is. It is part you know, val bullying. But... We have a lot of parents who don't value themselves and they pass that right on to their kids. They don't, they, their kids aren't valuable to them. And they, the kids know that. They go to school and they know they're not valuable. So how can they overcome that? That's a big hurdle. Mm -hmm. Well, we just got to encourage those kids. We got to, we got to give them their, Self worth that. Yeah, that's all. We actually have a guest speaker coming to talk about self worth to our we going to take my thing. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, and, I'll let him discuss that more. And a lot of times, to just point on your, your your the focus on bullying. Um, see, like you know, um, consequences curve behaviors, crazy <laughs> changes behaviors, right? Shapes behaviors, mm -hmm. and so. It's almost you want to focus on the anti of what bullying is, 
if, if you're going to focus, right, you need to address the bullying, but you need to focus on what, what to do, to not do. what not to right. do. And right. Right. And a lot of times it gets easy to caught up, get caught up in what, focusing on what not to do, because that's in present, that's in front of you. It's easy to respond to. It takes a lot of work to go out and identify the behaviors that you're looking for, because a lot of times you, you think they're expected. And so that takes more mm -hmm. effort on our end as adults to make sure we're actually acknowledging and praising and I get, I get a little worried when we say we want to focus on bullying because well, yeah, gets, I guess I, I want to focus on reducing bullying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. We have a lot of directions, but thanks, Brian. Appreciate the talk. Okay, uh, moving along. Item four, citizen input. I do not have any cards in front of me, so I guess we will breeze past that tonight. <clears throat> Nancy also let me know this afternoon that no one had submitted anything online either. So that's, that's an option too. All right, item five, consent agenda. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Discussions or comments on the motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, let's go off to the phones first. Uh, Catherine. Hi. Yes. Okay. Yes. Janice. Aye. And an aye for me. Hey, Adam Six, District Reports Information. Mr. Marshall. What I have left of you already, Brian. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm real excited to announce uh, we became aware of a, a nationally known motivational speaker. His name is Jared Scott, uh, and his focus is um, focused on mental health. Uh, and so he has a range of offerings. Uh, he was in the region and reached out to us, and we were actually on the look for very similar things to kind of provide. I mean, we're already doing a fair amount, a lot, with you know our programs in place like Sound Vista and that, but we can always use a boost, and especially you know a really powerful presenter uh, that's student focused can you know really get that message home in in a, in a special way. And so, um, so so we've uh, in, invited Mr. Scott to come and present, and part of the process was. Uh, with the staff is saying, well, what are the kind of priority needs that we'd like him to focus on? <clears throat> and so we have, he's actually doing four different uh, assemblies tomorrow. Uh, and I will email you the times and you are invited and welcome to come and attend. Uh, I, and we'll post some links to some of his stuff on YouTube. Um, very dynamic, powerful speaker. We're real excited. So for, uh, and I'll just go in time order. So the first one we'll be doing will be for the ninth and 10th graders. Uh, and it's, it's his focus for that one will be giving and receiving respect with an anti bullying team. Uh, and so that's 8.05 to 8.55 in the morning. Uh, and then the next one he'll give for the 11th and 12th graders uh, is self-worth, self-care, and finding your purpose. So that's going to be the focus of that. So they felt that that's kind of a little bit different focus for the different uh, grade and age levels. And that's 9.05 to 9.55 at the high school. Uh, and then for the middle school, um, it's uh, the, the first one, all the kids will go to it. So they'll actually go to two different assemblies with a break in between. These are like 45 minute assemblies. So they're you know, not super long. Uh, so the first one he'll be presenting is uh, appropriate use of social media, um, which you know, sometimes we use help with that. And then the second one will be a, a bullying prevention uh, message uh, out there as well. So we're real excited to have him here. Uh, and this was, you know, in part you know, cooperation with other schools in the region. We actually got a really good deal. We wouldn't have been able to afford them to just do it on our own. So it worked out really well and things aligned. So, uh, so the, the first middle school one on social media is 1.15 to 2 p.m. And the second one is 2.25 to 3.10. And you're more than welcome to come to any What date is this? Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit last minute. It was kind of like, hey, we're in town. And so it was a bit of a scramble, but everyone pulled it together. And what uh, are the morning? Pardon, the, the morning time is five and the, nine uh, giving and receiving respect is 8.05 to 8.55. And uh, self-worth, self-care, finding your purpose is 9.05 to 9.50. Is there any, you may have just mentioned, I may have missed it, but is there a chance that our, like, our, our media program will be able to Record capture this and put together a little video and put it on the website? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Typically presenters like that, you know, they'll, they'll sell you a recording, but you're not allowed oh, to record well, their stuff. And he has a website with lots of samples. We'll post some links just so folks can get okay. an idea. 
info went home to families, letting them know that that he was coming and, uh, and that we would be having this presentation. So we're really excited about being able to do that. Um, another uh, highlight that I'd like to call out is the College and Career Fair, which was today, uh, and had it was just I mean we filled the whole gym. It was it was amazing. Uh, Deanne shares and so kudos to uh, Principal Veritek as well as the high school staff. Um, it was a whole lot of logistics, and we had uh, approximately 60 businesses, uh, seven uh, different branches of the military, uh, five colleges and, and universities, and it was also help from three of the high school site councils. So that space was filled. Uh, you had everything, you know, just about any interest area. I visited with folks from, uh, you know, from like Town and Country Vet. They were there, so they were talking about different opportunities for, uh, you know, school-age students as well as what the progression might be afterwards. We had a lot of the trades uh, talk with, <laughs> electricians have great stories. If you ever want some really scary and interesting story, talk to an electrician. They kind of share you about what to do and what not to do. Uh, so a lot of the different trades, and again, different military recruiters were there, uh, as well as uh, a, a number of our regional schools. So uh, super successful. Dan has already sent out a feedback survey uh, just to really build on that and to help ensure uh, its continuation. Last year, it was probably about thirds the amount. We had a lot of last minute cancellations this year. Nearly everyone showed uh, in terms of the, the vendors and the businesses. So that was, uh, that was pretty amazing and a great job and a great opportunity for the kids. It was all morning, the different classes came through. Um, and we'll, one thing that we'll wanna talk with someone about is some of those other businesses were like offering our staff jobs. We say, don't do that, <laughs> you're coming here, don't do that. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, just super wide range of opportunities. Yeah, it's a competitive market, that's for sure. Uh, and so, um, so then lastly, uh, just touch on where we are in the bond consideration process. Uh, so uh, Didi and I uh, have been to, uh, to K school and we met with their leadership team, had a conversation about you know, what some of the ideas were, you know, confirmed as like nothing is solid and no formal decision has been made. We really want your input. Uh, and so the leadership group then went to the staff and gathered the input and then they're sharing it back with us. Um, we're going to do the same process in each of the other two schools um, and use that same model of visit with their leadership, have the leadership talk with the rest of the staff, gather the input. Uh, and that will certainly inform, you know, what we bring to you in terms of, okay, here's what some of the initial thoughts are. Here's what our staff are saying in terms of needs and, and wants and what we would, uh, in terms of like infrastructure. Uh, and, and renovating spaces. Um, we're gonna do a second round before the end of the school year of the, with the survey outfit, uh, as the board requested to get a little bit, take some learnings from the first one and get more specific. Uh, one of the big things that was not able to be extracted from the data was, um, is there any differentiation between folks who live within the city and who live uh, in the county? Uh, that was a significant question and the way they collected it, they just couldn't filter that. So that will be one of the considerations so that they can come back to the board and be able to say, here's what the perspective of the folks who live out of town uh, and in town are. Um, so that will be coming before the end of the school year, as well as considerations for input on staff feedback. Um, and then, of course, you know, I've been working with, and Dean and I have been working with Elena on that so that she can continue that process over the summer into next year. Uh, and so by the end of the school year, uh, we should have some more significant information for consideration and then a timeline of like what we would want to consider doing over the summer as well as next fall. And then when a decision would need to be officially made in order to be considered for the following the May 24 ballot uh, for that. So, um, so it's just a further refining uh, and more engagement with staff. And then obviously a part of that will be the community as well to gauge you know, what their priorities are and there are other things that haven't been considered. So any questions on that? Next, the Griffin, do you know um, why they're, they didn't do the community in this year? It was interesting, I think last year was the first, but we had like a couple hours for students and there was- Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I'm not sure of the exact, they're, they're- um, It was an evening thing last year. Well, it was kind of yeah. afternoon and end of the day. Uh, and I, and I'll have to, I, I, I remember a discussion about it, but I honestly don't remember the reason of why and whether it was more just to focus on, uh, you know, the kid piece of it for that. I, mean, um, I think it was great either way. Yeah. It was great. And I think that there was a lot of good input today. I just, I, and I do remember last year that it was less attended by the community and the students. Of course, the students had time to each check out, you know, and they were here. Uh, 
Yeah, and it was it was it was pretty sparse in terms of community coming to that, and I don't know if that informed the conversation. Yeah, um, and or is just you know a very intensive preparation activity, and so wanted to keep the school focused, uh, so, you know, potentially other opportunities for you. Because really that, and that's the goal of why it was put on is really giving students, you know, these are some direct opportunities and pathways you can choose and opportunities to talk with uh, the folks who get it and push up challenges for, <laughs> for, for uh, what is it, search and rescue. Apparently there's, you know, there's some qualifier there. So, you know, I walk by and they're just like, I would you do too. Yeah. yeah, I had to run like across the, the give me with 300, no, not 300, 300 pounds. I was going to say that was impressive if I did that, but <laughs> 30 pound weights in each arm back and forth. And then I had to do 20 push ups for a hoodie. Honestly. You did it? Yeah. A bunch of other kids did it too. She came home and said she couldn't do one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and some of the businesses, you know, they brought some equipment that the kids could go out and see. I saw a big giant. There was a stenographer there. Yeah, yeah. And she had us like oh, type. Really? And it was so weird. It was just cool because you just press one button and it types a consonant, a consonant, or or a special vowel, and it's like short. Yeah. <laughs> I learned shorthand in high school. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. All right. Uh, I guess we have district reports, finance reports. Any comments or anything the board would like to discuss on those items? A comment I think was new this time: the, the district communication report. So Nancy has a new one. Thank you for doing that. We're so happy to have. Yeah, and Nancy's officially back. This might be the first year. Yes. Welcome back. I brought some of the pictures I talked about in my report for folks to enjoy tonight. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah I was looking around. around. Yeah. We saw, um, we saw several at the last uh, OSBA. They're hanging up in the lobby. They would yeah. actually, in between the meetings on the Jumbotron, they were yeah. kind of doing the, you know. Yeah. So I saw Liam and, and so a few others that were. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I I just wanted to make a comment that I really appreciate the pictures in the reports. The visuals is so nice to be able to see. Maybe that was different. Yeah, there was a little fancy visual this time. Okay, uh, action items. First up, uh, teacher appreciation week. So that is May 8th to the 12th. So in our packet here, we have a resolution that I'll read aloud here. So 2023 Teacher Appreciation Week resolution. Whereas teachers mold future citizens through guidance and education, and whereas teachers encounter students of widely differing backgrounds, and whereas our country's future depends upon providing quality education to all students, and whereas teachers spend countless hours preparing lessons, evaluating progress, counseling and coaching students and performing community service. And whereas our community recognizes and supports its teachers in educating the children of this community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Brookings Harbor School District 17C Board of Directors proclaim May 8th through the 12th, 2023 to be Teacher Appreciation Week and be it further resolved that the Brookings Harbor School District 17C Board of Directors strongly encourage all members of the community to join with it in personally expressing, expressing appreciation for our teachers and their dedication and devotion to their work. That's probably very much an understatement, but I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution. I'll second, I'll second it. Okay. Catherine Beach, okay. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, any comments on the resolution or the motion, rather? We're working on that. <laughs> How's that? The the teacher appreciation we're working on. Oh, uh, some events. Yeah. Good. Well, let me know. I'd like to help out. Uh, let's look for, look for a vote then, Catherine. Aye. No. Yes. Jay. Yes. Janice. Aye. And an aye for me. So, yeah, at the very least, we need to appreciate our teachers every day, not just in a week or two coming up. Okay, next for action items, we actually need two motions here, Dee Dee, is that correct? Yeah, you can put it on. All, all in one? Okay. So for background, I think we probably all remember, but our um, upgrade track and multi-purpose field project, um, we've had great 
motion, I guess, or great movement on some of these things. I guess we could, since it's in our packet here, kind of officially say that we have a letter in here um, from the Booster Club, from Darren Farmer and Darren Fleshman, um, announcing that the Booster Club has raised all the funds necessary to upgrade our track and field. And those donations ultimately are coming from South Coast Lumber Company and um, what's likely to be a very also large in-kind donation from Tidewater contractors. So um, we're looking for an action tonight to, I'm not quite sure if we word it in one to say that we you know, move to- Accept move, the donation. Accept the donation is important wording here. I will happily move <laughs> to accept the donation and move forward with the- And overall approve the project. And overall, okay, I, I will move to accept the donation and move forward with the project. I second. I second it. Oh, sorry, I wasn't fast enough. Seconds and thirds. I think there's <laughs> lack of enthusiasm. Yeah. Uh, any comments on the motion? I um. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Catherine. Um. I just, when I read that, I actually I broke out into tears. It's just, um, I'm just so deeply grateful for uh, the uh, work that so many individuals have done to bring something that's going to be such a huge improvement for our students and last years. Um, and I would love to be able to see our students do thank you cards, notes, something for those individuals that have put in the work to make this happen. Um, I'm not sure how that could be facilitated, but I mean, personally, I'd like to see South Coast lovers be inundated, but I'm sure they don't want to be bombed with lots of thank yous, but. Uh, and, yeah, you know, certainly there needs to be a, a lot of acknowledgement. Right. Um, yeah. Some of those guys, I know they don't like a lot of that attention, but they're going to get some of it at least. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate for us to consider putting a banner thanking um, those who are contributing significantly so that it's there at the field. I, I, you know, I, well, there will be some of that. That's, I think there's some of that talked about. I, I don't know okay, if it's good. all been decided, but there's, yes, yes there is some of that going to be. Okay. I thought so, but I thought I'd double check. That's all I had to say. Okay, so we got a motion to move forward the project and accept the donation that we have here. So, Catherine? Aye. Yeah. Yes. Jay. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Heck yeah. <laughs> One more will make it a, a yes for me. So, awesome. We're excited about this. Um, I know. I was like, Mr. Marshall has another update, but I, I also know I've got a few sporadic updates and there's a lot of work going on to get things ordered and get things, you know, the day after graduation, almost things started. Yes. So, so in, yeah. in, in part, this is coming to you, I would say almost a little early because one, we don't have the final total number yet. Uh, and so we'll be coming back with some more details as well as the actual contract with the folks who will be doing that. We're also going to have uh, an MOU with South Coast Lumber boosters and the district just in terms of that process. And so, but that doesn't get solidified until we get the final numbers. We needed to do this because we've got to order the turf now in order to keep on track. So we received the donation for that part of it uh, because if we had to wait for the whole thing, we wouldn't have been on track for it to be done in the fall. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit of, here's some general stuff, let's move forward. There will be more details that the board will need to approve the contract and all those sorts of things under this umbrella of we'll take the donation and we want to move forward with the project. Yeah, so anyway, just getting all the materials ordered so it's here yeah. hopefully in time. To That's the big time piece is getting yeah. made. Okay. Right. Well, that concludes the action items. Um, I guess the only other thing is about a half a page upcoming dates here that I won't go through all of them, but a couple of them we talked about tonight, but just upcoming next, May 3rd is a board work session, don't forget teacher appreciation week on May, and then a regular school board meeting on the 17th. And I guess we talked about the budget meeting on the 23rd. And there's a couple other things going out from there. So anything else we need to spe specify here tonight? For anyone? Okay. Okay, well, let's go ahead and adjourn tonight and...
Thank you all very much. Have a good evening. Thank